Congress would be the second thing that I would do. The third thing that I would do very, very quickly is that I would convene uh, a statewide law enforcement coordinating council. Uh, when I was the United States Attorney uh, at that time, as you, many of you know, I oversaw the Southern District of Ohio, which, which was the southern 48 counties of the state, 5.2 million people, the uh, communities of Columbus, Cincinnati, and Dayton being included in that. And I set up a law enforcement uh, coordinating committee that basically brought law enforcement officials together, large and small counties, state, federal, local, and we sat down and we began to look at what the priorities were of my district. I knew what the priorities at that time were coming out of the Reagan administration and what were coming out of the White House and the Bush administration, but I wanted to see how those dovetailed with the priorities of local law enforcement in the field. One of the things the Attorney General has to do kind of as an aside is that he or she is the primary facilitator when it comes to technical assistance and education and training for all the county prosecutor's offices, okay? And what I want to make sure is that I understand what the priorities are of the communities, what their needs are in the different communities, large and small and medium-sized alike, and begin to shape the priorities of my office, at least within the realm of, of consumer protection and within the realm of law enforcement, to be able to accommodate and meet the needs that they have. And I would make that law enforcement coordinating committee a, a permanent committee and it would meet quarterly and we would have committees and we would break it down and it would be statewide and we would then determine what our priority would be able to accommodate and meet the needs that they have and i would make that law enforcement coordinating committee a, a permanent committee and it would meet quarterly and we would have committees and we would break it down and it would be statewide and we would then determine what our priorities were within the department within the attorney general's office based upon that a lot more I would like to do, but early on, that's what I would do. You said you were uh, going to be confronted with some very difficult decisions when you take office. Are, are those ones you are enumerating, or were you referring to something else? Uh, some of them I have enumerated, sir, but I think there's also others. I think a top-to-bottom to review of the Attorney General's office needs to occur upon uh, uh, my being elected on November 4th reason for that, and I, I did that when I became a United States Attorney, uh, our office in this district uh, was uh, considered by some in, in Washington, I'm not being overly critical, please, uh, to be underperforming in terms of what the expectations were in the Department of Justice. And so I did a top to bottom review, and, and I'm not suggesting that the Attorney General is not performing, but I found that that top to bottom review, looking at everything, you know, finding out where you can streamline, where you can make uh, cuts and things of that nature, looking at the contracts that are in place, seeing if there's ways that you can save money, whether you feel the resources are being properly allocated to meet the priorities of the office, I think that has to occur. And whenever, whenever decisions, whenever you do a review like that, and ultimately, you look at cost figures, one of the things that raises its ugly head is personnel. You know, making decisions on personnel is a very, very difficult one. But they're going to have to be made. I mean, clearly, I think we're going to have to look at some of the hirings that Dan made that those people are still in place. I'm not just suggesting because Mark and Dan hired them that they're immediately out the door, but there needs to be some basis to believe that they've got the skill set to be able to do the job uh, that they've been hired to do, and that has not always been the case from the track record with Dan. So it's those kinds of decisions in addition that we're talking about. And those decisions, I, you know, I've been making as a naval officer for 20-some years, and I made them as the United States Attorney. I make them as a managing partner on a regular basis. And I think it's really important, too, as, as, as you look at each of the candidates in, in, in this race in terms of their qualifications and skill sets, there, there's a big difference between running an office of 130 or 140 of non-lawyers and running an office of approximately 100 lawyers, or in my case, uh, uh, you know, when I was in uh, the, the Navy, 7,300 people. I found over the years that the skill set characteristics that make lawyers the great lawyers that they are, sometimes are the same characteristics that make them very, very difficult to lead. And that's exactly what's, what has to happen. Uh, we, we talk too frequently about, well, we, we have to manage this office. Well, you manage systems, but you lead people. And, and that, that requires a commitment on the part of the leader. And, and I think that that's going to result in me having to make some very difficult decisions that I know that are going to be taken very personally by some people over the course of the next six months to, to two years. 
but I can make those decisions because I've made those decisions on a regular basis. I can do it tactfully and I can do it respectfully uh, as, as is needed. And I think that's absolutely essential in that environment. Everybody's on pins and needles over there as it is. Nancy Rogers has been very good to brief each of the Attorney General candidates for this race. I spent only three, or three hours with her, a couple of telephone calls, and she's told me that, you know, obviously, you know, everybody's on pins and needles, doesn't want to take uh, a section T for an acting sec section chief position right now until they know who the Attorney General is going to be and what his policy is going to be and who's going to be out the door.